Before we start, if we could all just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please send your Holy Spirit to be here with us in this place. We are in need of your grace and of your love and of your forgiveness. Please, Lord, open our minds to what it is you want us to know about what the enemy is trying to do in terms of capturing our minds. Send angels to be in this place because there's going to be a battle in the minds of many here and we need your Holy Spirit to to guide us in these matters. I pray this in the name of Jesus, in your name, amen. It was mid-1862, and General Lee had just taken Maryland. The southern troops were crushing the northern troops, and it was General McClellan that led his army up to Maryland to meet General Lee. And as they were marching, one of his soldiers sat down to take a rest. And there in the mud was an envelope. And he picked up this envelope, and inside the envelope were three cigars and the battle plans of General Lee. How many know this story? There's a few. All right, this was known as the turning point of the Civil War. You can imagine the excitement of the northern troops all of a sudden having in their possession the battle plans of the enemy. This is very much how my brother Scotty and Brandon and I feel that we have been shown the battle plans of the enemy. And that's why we've entitled this uh, seminar, Battlefield Hollywood, for that very reason. We feel that this is a battlefield for our minds. And our scripture that we, we use as our motto is, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. I think that, that God doesn't want us to be ignorant to the devices of Satan, and that's why we are focusing on this uh, during these talks. Because you see, my brother and I especially we were under the power of sorcery, and we didn't even know it. There was a spell that was cast upon us that put us to sleep spiritually. The master sorcerer himself was behind all this, and and we didn't even really know it. You know, from a very young age, we were enchanted by the things that were coming out of Hollywood. Uh, Walt Disney, of course, he's, most of his movies are about the occult. Uh, he was a 33rd degree Freemason himself and was in a religion that he was very conscious of knowing the fact that he was in a religion that worshipped Lucifer by name. In Revelation 18.23, where it's talking about the end of the fall of Babylon, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom shall not be heard at all no more in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. My brother and I were deceived by sorcery. You saw on Sabbath afternoon, those of you who were here, we're dealing with occultism at its highest level. The entertainment industry is leading a rebellion against God. We believe that to our core because... We were raised Seventh-day Adventists. We were taught these things as children, and yet we still totally went away from the church. How is that? Well, there was a spell that was put upon us. This word sorcery in this text here, it's amazing. The Bible's amazing how you can just look at one little word and it opens up so much more knowledge to us. In the Strong's Concordance, the Greek root word is pharmakia, which we get our English word 
pharmacy. So look at the definitions here. The use or administering of drugs, poisoning, all right? This is sorcery. It's magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. So we could, we could kind of wrap these all up together and say, anything that medicates our minds so that we cannot follow the will of God, and the will of God is to worship and follow his laws, would be considered sorcery. So let's look at the mind for a moment. Neil Nedley writes a book, Proof Positive. Any of you have this book, Proof Positive? Good, good. This is an excellent book, excellent source for uh, um, all the things that, that medicate our minds so that we can't follow the will of God. Our brains, a third of them, are what we call the frontal lobe. Okay, this is the part of your brain that's right up here in the front of your, front of your forehead. It's the seat of our spirituality, our morality, and our will. That God-given gift that he's given each of us to choose between right and wrong. So it would be very important to understand anything that would hinder this vital command center. Right? We know that the mark of the beast is written on the forehead. We know that the, the name of God is written on the remnant church, the end time church. This is his character is in our minds right here. That's why it's symbolized by a mark on the forehead. Th this is what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom. A dog has about 7% of his brain being frontal lobe. And a cat has about three and a half percent. That's why dogs are more lovable than cats. <laughs> kind of puts that, that, uh, that, you know, dog is man's best friend, right? Not to put down the cats. The cats still have three and a half percent. But this is what sets us apart from the animal kingdom. We are, we are, our, the cognition that we have in our frontal lobe is, is a very powerful thing. And we need to be very careful with anything that would hinder this vital command center. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Where does God dwell within us? In our minds. In our minds. He doesn't dwell in my arms. He's not in my legs. He dwells in our minds, in our hearts. Okay? That's where God dwells. Spirit of Prophecy tells us in Acts of the Apostles, page 518, those who would not fall a prey to Satan's devices must guard well the avenues to the soul. They must avoid reading, seeing, or hearing that which will suggest impure thoughts. The mind must not be left to dwell at random upon every subject that the enemy of souls may suggest. The heart must be faithfully sentineled, or evils without will awaken evils within, and the soul will wander in darkness. Guarding the avenues to our mind. One of the major ways that lets down our guard is hypnosis. Just look at the classical definition here out of the Encyclopedia of Hypnosis, and we're going to refer back to this definition, so keep these things in your mind. Hypnosis is a mental state of heightened suggestibility. Characterized by a trance-like sleep, it is variously achieved by repetition of instructions in a low-level voice or by having the subject fix his gaze upon a light in an otherwise dark room. Testimonies to the Church, volume 8, page 293, tells us this. In the future, Satan's superstitions will assume new forms. Errors will be, be presented in a pleasing and flattering manner. False theories clothed with garments of light will be presented to God's people. Thus Satan will try to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Most seducing influences will be exerted. Minds will be hypnotized. 